and self-control. It's not like you grow in self-control, but don't grow in kindness. You get one fruit, you grow in all of that. So it's a great heart check question for us to go, am I growing in the fruits of the Holy Spirit because I'm plugged in to the vine? That's what Jesus is telling his disciples. You should be producing fruit. But then he goes on to verse 6 and makes a pretty powerful statement that we need to look at. And verse 6 says this, excuse me. <clears throat> Verse 6 says this. Anyone who does not remain, there's that word again, anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. Let's close in prayer. No! This is a heavy verse right here. <laughs> you can read this and you're like, what? This, this is sort of this is sort of heavy. Jesus is really asking the disciples there, hey, are you producing fruit? Or are you fruitless? Are you producing fruit? Or is there is there nothing there? Yeah, I think it's important that we get this point when it comes to understanding what a saving faith is. The idea of are we truly connected to the vine in a way that the Holy Spirit is going to work in our life to produce fruit. This idea of what is saving faith. Let me unpack saving faith for a second. Really, it requires two things. It requires belief and it requires trust. So I'll explain it in this way. Um, in, in a story here where a guy goes up and he puts a high wire across a canyon. And then he climbs up and he becomes this high wire walker. And, and you're sitting there watching him. And he walks across the high wire, across the canyon. And, and it's pretty amazing that he does that. And then he turns around and he walks back. And you see him go again back across. And he does a somersault along the way. And then on the way back, he does a cartwheel along the way. And then he grabs a, a, a wheelbarrow. Now he's walking across this high wire with this big wheelbarrow in front of him. And your friend comes up to you. And you see him getting ready to come back with the wheelbarrow, and your friend asks you, well, you, do you believe he can make it? And you say, yeah, I've watched him do it. I believe he can do it. But then the guy who has the wheelbarrow, the high wire guy, looks at you and says, get in the wheelbarrow. All of a sudden, the game changes. Because a saving faith requires two things. Not only do you believe that God exists, but you trust him with your life. You're willing to get into the wheelbarrow. You're willing to say, I'm going to trust you with everything that I have. And I can say in our society and in our world today, I think sometimes we believe God exists. We believe that God is real, but are we trusting him with our life? A saving faith, one that believes that Jesus is the vine, that you are connected to the vine, is a faith that says not only do I believe he exists, Satan believes God exists, but do I trust him with all of and I'm willing to get in the wheelbarrow and say, God, I'm going to trust you with my life. And this is what Jesus is talking to with the disciples when it comes to verse 5 and verse 6. He said, this is a big deal. I am the vine. And you are the branches. And if you're the branches connected to the vine, you will produce fruit. And if you're not producing fruit, then we get to verse 6. You're going to wither. And Jesus doesn't want anyone to wither. You're going to wither. So then in verse 7, he begins to talk about the benefits of being connected to the vine. Let's look at verse 7. Verse 7 says this. But if you remain, there's that word again, you're going to see it again and again. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. It's a powerful statement. It goes on to say in verse 8, when you, it's not a matter of if you will, um, but when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. And this brings great glory to my God. And when you are connected to the vine, something begins to change in your life. When you're connected to the vine, the Holy Spirit begins to work in you. And he begins to transform you. And he begins to change the way you think. In fact, if we go back to verse 7 here for a second, you can read this line here. If you ask anything you want, and it will be granted, you can read that and go, that's an awesome verse. But it doesn't always come true, so what's the tension of that? 
Because I pray that the Seahawks win the Super Bowl every year. And it doesn't happen. Oh, is this the Bible a liar? Is this verse, like, not real? Well, what's going on here? There's an important concept to understand on this, to make this verse make sense to that. That if we remain in Jesus, if you're connected to the vine, here's what happens. The Holy Spirit begins to work in your life. He begins to work to make you produce the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. And in Galatians 5.20, lists them all. And you begin to look at life differently. You begin to look at others differently. And in the process of the Holy Spirit working in your life, you begin to live life out in a different way. For example, maybe... If you've been, uh, maybe you have a, a bitterness or an anger against your ex-wife. And the way you pray for your ex-wife is God just strike her with lightning. And that's your tension for her. And yet as the Holy Spirit begins to work in your life and begins to change your life, you begin to look at your ex-wife in a way that Jesus looks at your ex-wife. And now you find yourself praying, God, would you reveal yourself to her? Would you show her great love? And this is a surprise to you. That God's in heaven going, the Holy Spirit's doing a great job. <laughs> Maybe you have teenagers at home. And you're just praying that they move out of the house when it's time to move out of the house. Because your patience is that empty and you're done. And, and yet, as the Holy Spirit begins to work in you, and maybe what happens is your view begins to change. And, and you go, the only way they're ever going to learn patience is because they see patience in me. You see, what happens? When you are connected to the vine, the Holy Spirit begins to work in your life to transform you, to be who God desires you to be, and you begin to pray the will of God. And when you remain in Him, you will pray the will of God, and when you pray the will of God, it will be completed. I pray, goodness, Father, allow your Spirit to bring to a couple weeks ago, I was preaching to Campus Church, and, and I would say the same thing to New Life today. Could you imagine if we were a church who sought out the conviction of the Holy Spirit? I think sometimes we're like afraid of the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Like.